Did you ever walk through today's video? Today's video, my 2014 Wrangler JKU. I'm installing new gears because the pinion on the other one broke. As you can see right there, tooth broke off the pinion. So I got to get the ring gear set up. That's why I got the file here. One of the things we got to do is lightly file the top to remove any burrs. I also got an oven because you want to heat it up to 200 degrees. And by heating up by 200 degrees, you're going to expand the metal a little bit to get it over top of the carrier, as I'm going to show you. As you can see right there, you got that gap. And you don't want to be using the bolts to pull it down because then you're going to pull it all cockeyed. You might get yourself into trouble. That's why. I got the oven here, about 200 degrees on. I'm just getting across the top lightly. This is a single cut file, so you can't drag it back. If it's a double cut, then I could. That's why I'm going in these strokes. So the purpose of filing the top of the gear where the bolt holes are is to eliminate any burrs that may affect when you go to bolt it up because that'll make an improper clearance and screw up your alignment when you go to do it now heat it up in the oven for as long as it takes to get roughly 200 degrees use gloves of course be safe so i just take it out of the oven put it on some wooden blocks you don't have to worry about it catching on fire now there's two sets of holes in there so you got to line up the holes to whatever size your carrier is and that's just what i'm doing and it should just pop into place. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm just putting the bolts in. And this is just going to get the gear set up until it cools off. That's why I'm tightening it up. This is Once it's cooled off, I'm going to remove the bolts and then set them back up. So after about an hour or so it's cooled down, I'm pulling the bolts out again, putting some red Loctite in. Putting them in finger tight for now. Going to do that with all the bolts before we get ready to start torquing them down. And the purpose of this is if you do this while it's hot, the ring gear is already expanded. So when it shrinks, there's a good possibility it may break the bond. And since the metal is expanded, when you go to put it on, your tolerances for your thread are going to be out a little bit too. So there's a greater chance that you may end up stripping it. So once the red Loctite's applied, you want to start torquing everything up. Now, of course, you have to use the torque values according to what size of bolts you're using. I know uh, Dana44 says 135, I believe it is. That's if you're using the half-inch bolts. These ones are the 716, so the torque value is a lot lesser. So when you go to torque it, you want to start off small. You want to do it typically three different values. So, for example, go 50 and then 80 pounds and then your final torque. And that way you get it torqued up nice and good. Once the ring gear is on and tightened down and torqued, it's time to press the bearings on. Now as you see, I made a spacer from the old carrier bearing. That makes it easier to press on. That way you're pressing on the inside of the race and you're not doing any damage. And with the press, of course, you got to be absolutely careful. You can see the bearings pressing down. And when it reaches the bottom, it's going to get tight. So when it gets tight like that, just don't keep on trying to force it on because things are going to go south. So there's the attachment on the end of the air hammer. What I'm going to do first is I got this tube of grease. And I'm just going to lightly, as I got some on my finger, is to lubricate around where the seal's gonna go are the race and then I'm gonna sit her in like so you're probably not gonna be able to see much but if you ever want to see if you got the bearing race in properly you can always just look from the back side Same thing as before. Put some white grease around there.
So I'm gonna start off, put the setup bearing on as such, and I'm gonna put some oil on it. Setup bearings work great if you don't have a tool to measure the pinion depth. So now I'm just measuring the old shim, and then I'm gonna measure out some new ones because you really shouldn't reuse the old shims. I mean, you can if it's in a pinch, but it's good practice not to. But because of the profile, I'm gonna do something different. So I measured up all my shims, 0 0.010, 0 0.015, 0 0.020. But this is where it's get interesting because I got the thick shim on the original differential. And take a measurement to there to there. And it's the same distance or same height without using a shim. So I think I'm gonna start to set up without a shim because the profiles are exactly the same. Now one thing you don't wanna do is put grease on your bearings because that'll give you an improper reading. You always wanna use gear oil on your bearings and make sure all the bearings are lubricated before you stick it in. I'm just fitting everything up. Now I'm installing that air locker piece without the seals because it's going to have to come in and out. So put your pinion in. We're setting it up without a crush sleeve. That's the way it goes. So once you get it tightened up, you want to tap it with a hammer. <coughs> and then since I'm using a used bearings, the rolling resistance should be about 15 inch pounds. I'm pretty close to there. So I'm just going to put the carrier in. I'm going to measure the backlash. Now I know my backlash is way out to lunch. So now I'm just painting the gears because I want to know where my starting point is. And this will kind of give me an idea on what I have to do. I am way out to lunch. I'm not even touching on the pattern. So I had the measurement of the old shim pack and I'm putting the shims just a little bit deeper than what the original setup was and then I'm gonna retry it again. The backlash is still out, but that could be a combination of pinion not deep enough or a carrier needs to be moved over one way or the other. So you can see one side, and then you can look at the gear pattern on the other side, and then my backlash is pretty close. Now hopefully your gears would have came with a book that tells you kind of like acceptable gear patterns if you're too close, too far, and kind of use that as a guide. And hopefully you can get your gear pattern kind of set up pretty close to where you want it. Check your backlash. You're always going to be fine tuning it. Because once you press the pinion bearing on for good, you're, you're going to change a little bit. But don't be discouraged if you're taking it in and out numerous times. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. So as you can see, by cutting my setup bearing, that's going to allow me to push on the inner race and not damage the bearings on the outer cage. So this is where I did something different. I'm measuring the old crush collar right there. Kind of give me a reference point. And what I'm using is I'm not reusing or using a crush collar in a setup. I bought a crush sleeve eliminator kit. So it comes with a bushing like that that I'm measuring. And then it comes with a bunch of, bunch of shims. So I got a stack of shims that's going to set me up pretty close to where the old one is. And then and the new bearing should be set up between 20 to 40 inch pounds of rolling torque. So that's what I did. Mine's set at right about 30. Uh, there's no play. So now I'm good to go. So now it's time to take the seals and install them into the air locker piece. I do want to point out that 
the shims in the video for the carrier I ended up using the old shims but I need to shim it another 30 thou more so that kind of actually worked out pretty good now I got the seals installed lubricate them with some oil and then push them on the ARB locker so that I know I got my pinion preload set up I'm gonna install the seal I put some extra grease on it to help keep that spring in place when you go and tap it in so you got unfortunately you got to take it all apart again you got a brand new nut you want to use red Loctite on it and then I got a brass hammer and I'm just gonna tap that seal into place then once that's done I got some silicone there that I'm gonna put on the splines of the pinion coupler there and that's going to ensure that there's no oil leaks that are going to come out through the pinion nut so in order to get the final preload i had to spread the case open a little bit that allowed me to get the carrier in with i believe it called for 10 thou over and now i'm going to put the bearing caps back on remember to use loctite as you can see in the video there got some loctite on them torque them down i believe the dana 44 was 80 foot pounds and then once you're done remember to tap the bearings that kind of sets them check your backlash make sure your backlash is in spec and now i don't know why i didn't i thought i did get a better video of this but just double checking the gear pattern see how the paint transferred on to the non-painted side of the gears and i'm pretty happy with the way the pattern turned out now i just ran that copper tube up and connected it to the airline which will eventually go to the air compressor well it's the moment of truth oh yeah it's holding it's holding oh yeah blue exhaust out part up again now of course it takes time to do the break in and reassemble everything but this video is not a how-to video it just kind of quickly goes over how to or what's all involved with setting it up but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments post them below and I'll see you guys in the next one.